So here's the Pleuritus Jamor. So it feels, you know, when you cut into it, it feels, you know, sort of like a potato latke, if you've had one of those before, or uh, like a hash brown patty or something. Nothing surprising there. Hopefully I don't die. Okay, wait a second. This is Nick from the future. I want to do a little bit of explaining here. What I'm trying to do is grow some mushroom on brown rice and fry it up in a skillet like a steak. This may sound crazy, but there's already a dish that exists called tempeh, which is very similar. So tempeh is a fungus that is grown on soybeans and it's eaten sort of in place of tofu. What you're actually eating when you're eating tempeh is soybeans that were partially decomposed by a fungi. Now the fungi that's used in tempeh is admittedly different than fruiting mushrooms in the Basidiomyces uh, kingdom, I believe. The fungus used in tempeh actually reproduces by a completely different means than fruiting bodies uh, that you imagine when you typically picture a mushroom. However, I think it is possible to make a similar product with fruiting mushrooms and eating the mycelia of fruiting mushrooms. So I don't really see any reason why it would be bad to eat mycelia. And in fact, Paul Stamets cites that there have been studies recently that show that the mycelia of mushrooms actually contain more active compounds than the fruiting bodies. So potentially you could do this with a medicinal mushroom like lion's mane and actually get more benefits in a shorter amount of time without the stress of perfecting fruiting conditions to get the actual fruiting body of the mushroom. As far as an economic standpoint, this is much cheaper and easier to obtain much more product rather than growing the mushrooms on a substrate and then waiting to collect the fruiting bodies. So to get to the actual experiment, what I've done is I've grown some regular oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostreatus, as well as some pink oyster mushroom on brown rice. Now this brown rice was just from one of those pre-packaged ready to eat rice packages. And I of course sterilized these with steam for about an hour. So today is the 10th of February. So it's been about two weeks that these guys have been growing. And you can see the mycelia is pretty dense, especially in the oyster mushroom. And you can see the um, pink color of the pink oyster mushroom coming through, even though it's not fruiting yet, which I think is really interesting and might lead to an interesting product. So let's crack these open and see how they're growing. I'm gonna start with the oyster mushroom. All right, so the mycelia looks like it's definitely colonized the jar really well, even growing up around the sides. There could be some contamination right here that could just be a piece of rice. Let's open the pink oyster mushroom now. Okay, that's really interesting. That's a really pretty color. So you can see it's very pink. This one doesn't smell super nice. Let's see this one. So the oyster mushroom definitely smells like a mushroom, which is a, a good sign. The pink oyster mushroom definitely has a distinctly different smell. In the process of growing mushrooms on brown rice flour, I did notice that different varieties of mushrooms smell very different from each other. And I think that's sort of an interesting distinguishing factor. Potentially different varieties could have different smells and uh, flavors as well, just in the mycelium. So I'm gonna birth these, as they say. First, I'm gonna start with the ostreatus. All right, so after some careful smacking, here it is. 
super pretty. It definitely smells like um, I just cut up some button mushrooms or something. It's really soft um, in texture, which is nice. And the look of it right here definitely reminds me of tempeh. Um, really interesting feel, look, and smell to it. Could be cool. Okay, let's birth the pink oyster mushroom. It sort of smells like body odor, to be honest. All right, there it is. So again, looks like tempeh on the on the bottom. Um, it definitely hasn't colonized as much. There's a bunch of air space that I can feel here. Um, a little slimier than the Ostriatus variety, or species rather. So they look like little cupcakes. Let's slice off a piece of both of these and then fry it up in some butter and see what happens. Starting with the Ostriatus. Wow, it cuts really easily. Um, ooh, sort of reminds me of cutting a mushroom, maybe a little bit softer. The brown rice is definitely the main component of this. Let's actually cut off another slice. Really cool sort of marbling. I could imagine that you could get a, a variety of textures in this. You could have a texture along this outside maybe something that's a little chewier and then get some browning on the surface here. Now let's cut up the pink oyster mushroom. I have less hopes for this one, honestly. Okay. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera. Really cool surface. Um, variety of textures and patterns. There's definitely more air pockets. So the Ostriatus has almost no air pockets. Everything was filled with mycelium or rice. And then in the Jamor or the pink oyster mushroom, there's a lot of air pockets. Um, they both feel a little bit sticky, sort of like, you know, like rice. Uh, the Jamor, this pink oyster mushroom, feels a little more sticky. Let's fry these up and see what happens. All right, so let's do a little food review. Hopefully I don't die. It's a very interesting flavor. It's pretty plain. There's definitely more flavor there than tofu. The little crunch on the outside from the browning and the butter adds some texture to it, but the inside is soft. Um, and you can definitely, in your mouth, feel the individual grains of rice. The texture is really similar to what you expect. The soft grains of rice, the sort of mushy mycelia, it sort of is like a mushroom, but the flavor is not like a mushroom at all. It tastes like hydrated rice cake, which I guess makes sense. Let's try the Ostriatus. I have higher hopes for this one. Definitely a really cool looking texture on the inside. Kind of has some meaty qualities to it. Both of them are a little bit astringent. You know, that sort of feeling that dries out your mouth, like an unripe persimmon or a red wine sometimes is astringent, dries out your mouth. Especially the Ostriatus was astringent. Um, so I think this definitely has potential. It's, it's less plain than tofu. Um, I haven't had tempeh before, so I, I wouldn't really know. It definitely has some like bran sort of flavor, like grain flavor to it. Not very strong mushroom flavor. Um, I think it could definitely be used as uh, you know, in this format as a, as a steak, it would definitely need um, some sort of other flavor or sauce to it. 
to be really, really good. It almost tastes like beans. It tastes like a, a more plain, like black bean burger patty. Uh, it's pretty good. So I'm not gonna eat any more of it right now, just in case there were contaminants in the way that I grew it, um, or in case the mycelia of either Pleurotus or Austriatus is toxic in some way. I don't wanna take any more chances than I already have. But I think, it, I think it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I think I'm gonna live. Um, yeah, so I definitely wanna do more experiments into this to see um, if I can do it again, if I can get a little bit more dense mycelial growth in the grains of the rice and thereby get a little more flavor. I'm not really sure if that's possible, but I think this definitely has some potential but anyway, that's the experiment. Go out and grow something. Thanks for watching.